And we heard a little sizzle. What was that noise? What are we starting with? So well, first, what are we cooking? Right. The main so, event. Yeah, we're going to be doing a, a squash soup this evening, but it's going to have a little bit of curry in it, some cinnamon. Uh, it's going to be really a, kind of a, a, a Middle Eastern take on a, on a modern day squash soup. And you said this is going to be a cold soup. Correct. You know, okay. today we're preparing it. It's going to be warm, but I suggest you chill it overnight in your fridge, serve it uh, cool the next day. Eh, probably three or four hours of cooling is all you need. A little bit of creme fraiche on top. It's super refreshing on these hot nights. That's what we can use. So what are we starting with? Uh, in this wonderful soup. So I've got a white onion that I did a nice small dice on and got that going in our pan with uh, some shallot and some uh, minced garlic as well. So basically the strategy here is I put a little bit of oil in the pan and I'm just gonna be rendering some of the water out of our vegetable here. So once our onion starts to turn translucent, translucent it's gonna be about three minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And does it matter, onion, shallot, both? Uh, I like to play all three. Onion, okay. white onion, shallot, and garlic go together really well in my opinion. So to kind of help the rendering of the water from these, I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. I'm using some sea salt today. You can use kosher, table salt, whatever you like. And you're starting to see these onions are starting to turn a little bit translucent. But why do we try to get that water out? What is the, the theory behind that? Well, so I start, if I start kind of crowding the pan and putting all these vegetables in at once, the pan temperature is gonna drop down and what's on the, the vegetables on the bottom are gonna start to get color. Oh. Uh, and you're not gonna be able to leach all the, the real flavor. When you gotcha. cook garlic real slow, same with onions and shallots, it starts to release a different flavor. So if you render that, then you layer your soup together, you're gonna get a really nice even flavor. Cause I know when I'm not so much soups, but when I'm cooking other meals, sometimes the vegetables like make everything watery, like a sauce. Right. And it's like, how do I, I've literally had to like tip the stuff out of the pan. I don't think that's- Layers to your dishes, think uh, depth, okay. you know? Depth. And if you can start to draw some of that water out in any way possible, that's it. So don't be so shallow. Right. right? That's what you're telling me. <laughs> so, exactly. So I've got a beautiful large squash I took here. I peeled it and did a nice large dice segments on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with a center cut squash. You could use any yellow squash or zucchini from the store. Whatever you like the flavor of best. And then in I go with a little bit of Madras curry and a cinnamon stick. Okay, so that's, I smelt the curry once you kind of start mm -hmm. unpacking the things. Is this going to be, you know, some folks think curry, they think, oh my gosh, it's going to be really spicy. Or is this more of a kind of tame or Indian curry? This is a tame one. Now you could easily turn up the heat if you wanted to do a different spice. I'm using a Madras curry, which is in the recipe attached. Um, however, if you want a red chili paste or maybe a little cayenne pepper in there to give it a kick, so be it. I mean, and this is a soup that's going to be very versatile. Like I said, you could do pretty much any squash or zucchini in it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to let this cook for about mm, five minutes or so. I'm going to throw the lid on it and we'll get a little steam action going in there. And that's what I was wondering. Do I have to add water to this or just... At this point, we're whatever. just going to let the steam come from the vegetables, kind of cook in with the, our, our uh, curry. It's going to create a nice aroma, kind of soften up our vegetables. And then when we come back, we're going to go in with our veg stock and our coconut milk and kind of let that reduce. Okay, it smells wonderful already. Thank you, John, for this full recipe. Be sure to head to our website. That is azfamily.org slash your life. And that'll be under the recipe section. We are back in the kitchen with chef, chef John Amon with uh, Harvest. Uh, so earlier we were kind of sweating the onions. Is that the right word? Correct. Sweat the onions. Sweating the onions. Kind of soften up the squash. So we had the squash, our curry. Now we're letting that kind of work together the flavors. Uh, so our squash is starting to soften up a little bit here, which means it's time to add in our coconut milk. And if you're just joining us, this is going to be a cold squash soup when it's all said and done. Correct. Now, today we're going to be eating it uh, on the set warm. However, you just chill it in your fridge overnight and you're going to have a nice cool soup for any of these hot evenings. It's perfect. Does that change the flavor drastically, uh, chilling it versus just doing it warm S traditionally? I would say yes, it's going to change it. Uh, not too dram drastically. However, you're going to want to watch your salt content. I would under salt things that I'm going to refrigerate. This is a good rule of thumb for a salsa, oh, for a soup, something like that, because as it chills, personally, I've noticed that the salt flavor gets a lot more intense. I see. So you don't want to make something that, you know, oh, it's a little salty. If you chill it, it's going to be salty so the next time. Crank up, crank up the saltiness. Yep. Uh, so what did you add just a second ago? So that was some coconut milk, just mm -hmm. random, uh, just one can of coconut milk you find in the store and two cups of vegetable stock. Um, now to this, I'm going to add a little bit more salt. At uh, first I added salt with the onions to help them sweat a little bit. Now I'm going to add a pinch more salt and I'll crack some fresh black pepper into this as well. I kind of stirred it. And now basically what I want to do is get this up to a nice low boil. And then how long do we want to have this kind of sitting for on that slow, low boil? So we have two techniques here. Now, if you wanted to serve the soup hot and you're not planning on chilling it, you could leave it uncovered and let it reduce. However, since what we're going to be doing is going to kind of chill it down, we want all that liquid to stay in there mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't get too thick in the fridge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it and we're going to let this go for about 10 minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes. 
Um, we're gonna let our squash be the judge on this. If we okay. pull it, we're gonna stir it occasionally, and if it's fork tender is the term I like to use, oh, gotcha. we're ready to go. They're just sticking in the fork, and if it goes through smoothly, then ready to go. Exactly, just like that. What are, uh, squash is in season, What's a good way to pick those in a supermarket? Now, I know they do a lot of the work for you, but is there things I should be looking for when I'm trying to find that perfect squash? You don't want it too soft, all right? And you don't want to find bruising on it. So we'll use this as a perfect example. I mean, you know, very little suntan on it, and you yeah. can tell by feeling it, it's got a nice firmness to it Does still. Does it need to be a certain green or yellow? Or, this, I mean, yellow squash would be different. You know, but. and I would just make sure you choose something that's gonna be an appealing flavor, the, the color of it. So these, these uh, center cut squash I'm using are kind of like a mango. They're green on the outside, but they're nice and yellow on the inside. So just think of a, a nice appealing color of what your final product is gonna be. Okay. So, and I forgot to mention, we're gonna add our agave syrup here oh, to our okay. soup. A little sweetness. Correct. And this could be changed for you know a nice barrel-aged maple syrup or whatever you have. Kind of play with your squash and your spices. Okay. It's a very versatile soup. Uh, so on your screen right now, you see a little black square and it has a, what looks like a code. That is a QR code. So what you do is you open up your phone's camera All right. and take a picture of that. And that is gonna send you right to our website and it's gonna have this exact recipe. So it takes you right here. We're very technological here. I don't know if you know that, John. I like the way that I know works. you live on a farm, <laughs> but we're doing things very high tech here. Sure. Uh, what are we? What are we be working on when we come up? So uh, when we next? come back um, it, between the break here, I'm gonna take a standard hand emulsion blender. Mm -hmm. If you have a standing blender like a Vitamix or anything, it does the exact same job. But basically, we're gonna blend the soup okay. after we turn the throttle back a little bit, so it's not a raging boil. Oh, good. And then at that <laughs> point, if you felt like refining it, you could pass it through a strainer or a chinois. But this gets it pretty nice and creamy with this blender right here. I'm just gonna chill it and serve it. Okay, sounds wonderful. Thank you, John. When things cool off, be sure to head up to Castle Springs and pay John a visit. We've been blending during the break and this delicious soup is almost ready. You're right. Chef John, where are we sitting right now with this? So right now what we have, I've kind of taken our uh, blender. Now if you're doing this in a stand-up mixer or, your, or a stand blender or a hand emulsion, uh, this one happens to have a variable speed on it. I start on low and work my way up once I get the chunks breaking down. Gotcha. Same principle if you're in the, the blender. So I'm just gonna give it a quick little buzz here. But over the break, I got it kind of where I wanted it. So now, if it's, the speed is too high or too low, is that going to drastically change things, or just going to take longer to get the no, squash No, no, it's chunks? it's the only thing. My concern would be is if you if you kick it on at a high speed and there's still chunks in there, it's going to start flying everywhere. Oh, it's a mess. It's, it's going like, to make a big old okay. mess. You can't blend it too much. No, okay. no, absolutely not. So we're left with this nice royal golden color here, Ooh. and it's uh, it, again, keep in mind it's a bisque, so it's going to be a little bit thicker. Um, but if you wanted to thin it out once you've refrigerated it, if it's a little thick. Just add a touch more veg stock, some filtered water, coconut milk. You could add any of those ingredients to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Do you have to tweak everything? Would you have to add more salt or no. just a Honestly, little bit Honestly, just to a kind little bit more liquid. Up. And then like we had it sitting in there and I say the flavors kind of develop a little, that's exactly what's gonna happen in the fridge. So just loosening it up might be the trick right there. And then we're left with the beautiful bisque right here. And I've side here, I've set up some creme fraiche and I kind of julienne some, uh, some tarragon. Tarragon goes oh, okay. excellent with our squash. So we'll throw a little quenelle in there. We'll offset with a little bit of our avocado oil. How long would this last if I made it uh, tonight? Would it last a few nights or how, what's the well, kind of Well, you know, it's a, it's a pretty hearty soup. So you could easily make this last you three, four, five days. Um, I would spread it out. Maybe do it hot the first time, wait a couple days, filter it out, and then do it cold the next day. The flavors awesome. are gonna change. Uh, your family might be surprised that it's a little bit different, or maybe the second time you do it, you could heat it up, add a little bit more uh, cayenne pepper or something to it. Kind of more kick. Yeah, just kind of change its identity slightly. This could be a meal on its own. Would you ser recommend serving it with anything in particular? Obviously, bread would be delicious, but. You know, if you wanted to make, I was thinking on the drive out here, if you did a Gouda grilled cheese. Oh my gosh, right? yes. Or a little Fontina. Why didn't you do that? This no, could I'm be kidding. delicious. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I mean, that's just your perfect vehicle oh, for that it. Sounds so delicious. I'm just doing what I normally would here and just garnishing with some garden uh, flowers, it's a little dianthus and some uh, blossoms from our Thai basil. Beautiful. Um, but it all comes together really well. That's perfect, a nice chilled soup on a hot day. Lord knows we got plenty of those. Sounds good with me, right? Yes, that's wonderful. Chef John Amon with Harvest at Castle Springs. Be sure to pay them a visit when they uh, open up in the fall. The full recipe that is gonna be on our website, that is azfamily.com slash yourlife. We'll be right back.
summer soup right here. Thank you, Chef John Amon uh, from Harvest. This is going to be wonderful and a sure. nice, nice soup uh, utilizing that squash, which right. you guys specialize in. So thank you so much. Hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you tomorrow.